What's up guys? We're back. We're back and I uh, am so happy to be here, man. Spawn is still going on and we can catch these fish just about everywhere. Today we're going to be looking at shallow, shallow spots. That's the focus and uh, running around this lake getting ready, ready for some guide trips. So let's hit it. Let's have some fun. It's a bright, early, beautiful day. A little windy, but uh, we're going to put some slabs in the boat. Thanks for watching, guys. Here we go. Ooh. All right, a little tougher today. That's no doubt about that. Well, that's a good starter fish. First fish today, this episode. Oh, look at that. That's not bad there whatsoever. Let me talk to you for a second. This is going to be a fun episode, man. Sporting a new bait pop hat. Appreciate them, the original fish form. You check them out. The new three pound fish and 10 footer. It is going to be called the Hammer 10. Hammer 10. It is the hammer. Bring the hammer to the lake because um, those will be here in about a month or so, 30 days. That pre sale is going to start. The best 10 footer on the market. Um, it's what I use. You guys know it every day. Every single day I use a 10 footer. I've been working on this for such a long time behind the scenes and now. We're gonna to get to enjoy it. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, a lot of things and details I certainly will share with you guys as we go along that path. But uh, you know, it's a uh, it's interesting spawn, and we've got now I believe the may ha mayfly hatch. I've seen a lot of small bugs, so definitely scaling down on these baits is critical. Check these guys out right here. Check these guys. We're gonna to try to catch those fish right there. See that right there? We're gonna to try to catch those. Let's just do that. Here we go. It's always a question of whether or not they're going to be active or not. So they're just sitting right there. I really like to go down on these type of fish right here with a hair jig personally. Um, but, you know, if they're active, see how it's just swinging in there perfectly. Look at this. He's even turning for it. Hopefully he's turning for it. Uh, he's just kind of leery of it, really. People ask me all the time, how can you tell if it's a bass or a crappie? Well, obviously the shapes are a little different. One's longer, one's more like a bowling ball. I prefer the bowling balls. But what I always say is, is uh, bass are snaky. They move up and down the water, water column and when they swim around, they're very snaky-like, slithering around. And uh, those quite possibly could be bass. But sometimes we drop on them anyway because I'll tell you, when they're slow and lethargic like these seem to be, um, we're going to try them out. That's for sure. I have been fooled. And there's no doubt about it. You know, there's only so much you can do. At the end of the day, sometimes you got to drop on them. And um, look at that beautiful fish right there. Come off this big old log. And that's our number one fish right now. Look at that, guys. That's awesome, isn't it? Struggling a lot with this pollen in the water, but if you look right here, guys, see them just hanging out on this log right here? And they look like they're decent sized fish. So I can just cast it in there, let it float down there to them and roll it away. And hopefully you have some taker so here comes one right here boom i don't know how big that one's gonna be he looked a little smaller but hey he got his tuxedo on look at the dark got partial tuxedo on we let him go here at three pound fishing that's how we roll and this throwing a paddle tail with the uh a prototype new 10 pound braid trying it out today just kind of oh yeah there's another one trying a different well a small guy trying some new stuff out for that'll be coming out here in the probably coming out here i should say in the uh, in fall so a lot of times outside these spawning bed areas too you will get some roamers so here's a good good example of that roamer there um, 
and of course i love this you know this is tournament fishing right here this is what you're doing all day long at tournament fishing um and uh it doesn't get any better i love it especially on my home lake because we don't get to do it enough really and here he is he's, he's ready to pop it and there it is and yep yeah, and that's a that's a mama that's a mama sitting outside just waiting to come in look at that beautiful fish beautiful fish now when we get to these type of conditions i do like blackheads and hair jigs more than i like anything else i've been just jacking around with colors here let's switch to one of those new colors here it's a baby well let me just let me just show you here I'm gonna show you the loop knot, the whole nine yards. I still get asked about the loop knot. I think that's kind of funny because you guys know I have shown the loop knot a thousand times on TikTok, on everything. <laughs> but um, right here, check that guy out. So that's a white head, kind of a baby pink body with a black tail. And um, my eyes are not what they used to be. Whenever I order Ch Chanel and a lot of the products that I use to make these hair jigs, um, I like to I like to play around with different colors, right? So this is kind of a baby pink, kind of like the baby bubble gum, to be honest with you. And um, I like to make new hair jigs to see what's actually what's working. What I like about this one here is that it's got a got a black tail. So this is a 132nd ounce. You put it through the eyelet. There's a lot of ways to do this. I swing it around. Don't get tangled up like I just did. Yep, swing it around. Then you grab that jig and you put it right back through the hole that you were holding and have created right there. You get a gob just like that. And then to, you can kind of pull it together. And that is the perfect loop knot. That one is the perfect loop knot. I like the loop knot to be roughly around a quarter of an inch above the bait so why do we do a loop knot we do a loop knot so that it hangs horizontal looks more natural a little bit more free so that's what we're going to throw right now let's try it out mm. all right well medium-sized fish but it did like the pink so that's a good deal Now, letting them go, of course, what I will do, I will sprinkle, I didn't initially, but I will right now, crappie formulation, no joke, bottle's almost empty, I've got about three of them in the boat, and I love putting that right on the hair jig just like that i absolutely feel like there are days that you know the fish are going to be super active you don't need it but when you want to you know i think give yourself the edge as i like to say i like to put a dab of that crappie formulation that oil will stay on that hair jig i love it because it absorbs it it actually gives that chanel extra sparkle too so just you know they're inexpensive. It's worth having a having it in your boat, in my opinion. Look at these fish. They're just roaming around out here. Some are more active than the others, and certainly you could be casting up against the shallows right now. But uh, sitting back here, looking for the the girls with the eggs, a lot of them are going to be sitting just outside that spawning area, soaking up the sun, as I like to say. There we go. Oh man, that's a small fish. There we go. That's a better fish.
hey guys thanks for watching i appreciate you great day on the water enjoy your summer